Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be exploring surfacing and creating this object. Now if we look at this object it's a YouTube play button but it's basically the same shape as a bar of soap. The thing is this is made from a curved rectangle but there is curvature that goes across here that we want to replicate. Let's just come out of here and we can get an idea of what the object looks like. So you can see the curvature that runs over the top and I've got a flat bottom here. But what we want to replicate is continuity across this surface going this way. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create that continuity in a very simple way and create this object all the way from start to finish, including the colors. So I hope you're enjoying these videos. And let's have a look how we create continuity across surfaces and create this finished object. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So in FreeCAD, we're starting a new document. For this demonstration, we're going to sketch something very simple in here. Now I'm going to create a number of profiles and create an open loft, a surface loft, to demonstrate the surface tool that I want to use. So we'll create a new sketch upon the XY plane and hit OK. For this, I'm going to be using the rectangle tool. So when you very first come in, you'll see this rectangle tool here. I'm going to use the rounded rectangle. So the reason why I've used this, create this rounded rectangle in here, and we'll just make some symmetry across this point and this point and this one. So two points and then the middle and make a symmetrical constraint. The reason why I've used this is because we have these curved edges. And if I created a loft with this and tried to surface over the top, we'll have a flat face. And I don't want that. If we look at a bar of soap or say a YouTube button, then we have a curvature going across the top. So we have our profiles. So this one's going to be my bottom profile. So let's rename that to bottom. I'm going to create two more, a mid and a top. For that, I'm just going to use the draft workbench. I'm going to create clones of this sketch using the clone tool from the toolbar. This one will be the mid. Let's rename that. And also we need another one. So I'm going to click on the bottom. I could also use the modifications and clone. We can move this tool. And when I say move it, we'll just create copy this tool up here. We can easily do that from the customized settings. And we've got one here. So this is going to be the top. Let's right click rename and set that one to top. Now we've got all the profiles. Let's move them. So I'm going to hit the mid one, place it in the middle somewhere. So I'm going to go up to placement, position, move it along the Z, around about five mil. Let's go about eight. That one there. And this one, the top, Place that on top at 16. So we have these in here. If I lofted through here, this will create basically a ruled loft going across here because we've got no curvature to that at the moment. That's fine. Let's carry on with that. Go to the part and you'll see why I've used clones in a minute. Let's use the loft tool. And I want to take the top, double click that, the mid, Click that and the bottom, place them in order. Make sure the crate solid is off because we're surfacing. I'll create single surfaces before I join them all together into a solid. Ruled surface has to be off as well. We're going to make curvature in there in a moment and closed has to be unchecked. That's it, okay. So we've got a basic loft through these profiles. I'm going to come over to the surface workbench. Let's come up to the drop down and select surface. Going to be using this tool here, the filling surface. 
And what I want to do is make this here more curved and follow the continuity of that curve over the top with a surface that goes over the top and also one on the bottom to make that shape. At the moment, well, we haven't got any continuity going across here. So the first thing I'm going to do is come into this loft and select the mid profile, this one here. This is the reason why I've used clones. I could create, say, three sketches in here, but what a clone allows me to do is take the mid profile there, this profile, come down to the scale and increase the scale to say, 1.05 and we get this curvature. So we've got a straight side here and a curved side here. Let's do this across the board. So I'm going to take 1.05 and just place it across the Y and the Z. And those have been added in there. So we've got a curved profile across all of these. We could have used something like a sweep across here, but I've used this for the time being. So we've got our top, mid and bottom profiles. Now I want to create a surface across here. One tip I can give you straight away with this is hide the profile that is closest to the edge that you want the surface across. So the last thing you want to do, because you're going to select edges going across here, is accidentally select edges from two objects because it will just error. So you save you some time, click the top profile and press the space bar. That means we can only get to these edges going across this object and we shouldn't hit a problem. Next, select the fill in surface, this one here, or surface fill in. We're gonna add the edges of this object in sequence to create a surface going across here. Now watch what happens. You can see this button is highlighted. If it's not, and it's something like this, then just click it and we've activated the tool. We just need to click, we don't need to control click, we just need to click the edges in sequence, one by one, and the surface is being added. At any time we can hit okay and come out, and well, that's not a very good surface anyway, but we could take that surface if we wanted it, or we can just double click, click add, activate the tool again, and carry on with our surfacing. So for instance, we could take this surface. If I exit now, that surface will be applied. I want all the edges, all the edges going around. So all the edges are going around this object, but we've got something called a C0 continuity against this face here and this surface, or all these faces in this surface. We want some continuity going across here to create a dome effect going across this. How do we do that? Well, we could go in and add a bottom surface and then make it solid and create a fillet across this edge. But that's not going to get the effect that we want. If we think of a bar of soap or a YouTube button, then this curves this way slightly and we get this doming of the surface. Let's come back into the surface and you see that we've got this here. At the moment it's grayed, so it's not obvious how to activate this and this is the tool that we want. I'm going to take some of these edges. So I'm looking for the edge here and these four edges. I could do it across here, but there's no need to. And I'm going to double click in the list. You notice the edge has been highlighted and we get this continuity options here. The first one is the face. Now this face, there will only be one in here because this is the face that connects up this edge. There's only one face. If I hover over that and look down to the left, it's saying face free. So in this drop down, we will have face free. We select that. The continuity at the moment is still C0. So we've got the continuity drop down here. That's the set that and you can see nothing's happened and it's disappeared. But it, we just double click again and it's remembered what we selected. Let's change this continuity down to G1 and set that. We've now got continuity between this edge and this face and this face. So 
So we've got a G1 continuity going across there. I'm going to add it to all the edges. So our next one is this one here. Double click that. And it's going to be all the corner edges I'm adding it to. So face one, which will be this one here. If I hover over that, look to the bottom left, face one, that's correct. And matching continuity set. And you can see what's happening. As you can see, the dome is a bit too high at the moment. So that's just work our way around, just adding those. Face seven, G1. You're going to keep the continuity the same throughout. And our last one, face five, this one here, and make that G1. So that's the surface added with continuity. But as you can see, this dome isn't what I want. Way to lower this dome, well, one way to lower this dome is to affect the continuity of this edge. Because I've used clones, we can scale that as I did before. Remember, I took the mid and I changed the scale of this. So the scale of this, if I set this to one, then it's going to go straight up. There we go. So straight continuity there. So as I change this, so if I set this to 1.5, and the surface is going to deform quite a bit until I add all these. We have lowered that dome, as you can see. This is a bit of stream. So I'm going to set this to something like 1.02. Let's try that. And do that across the board, X, Y, and Z. Still too much. So 1.2, go for 1.2 here. And we're getting the shape that we want. We can see the shape is starting to take the one that we want. I could affect this edge here. Or if we set that back to 1.1, I could take the top profile. It's the top profile here. So you can see that one there, and we'll move that inwards. So the scale of that as 0 0.9, and the same across here. And we've moved that one inwards. So we get a different effect. So you can see we've got this curvature that comes around and sweeps this way. If we look at it in profile, you can see what's happening there. Let's hide those profiles. I'm going to take all those and hide them. At the moment, we've got this object. Let's close this. So we've got this side. Let's close the back now. All my profiles are hidden. So I'm going to use a fill in surface again, add edge. Going to add these edges. Now I may just want a flat surface this side. Let's have this laying down. So I'm just going to use this as a flat surface. I can add continuity if I want. Again by double clicking, so this one, and picking the face, face seven, and putting the continuity against that set. So you can see you've got that continuity there. I don't want the continuity. So I'm going to come in and set that to none and C0 and accept that. That's OK that. So I've got this object here, two surfaces and a loft. I'm going to join these surfaces together. Now I'm going to use the Curse Workbench for this. If you haven't got it installed, come to Tools and Add-on Manager, and you'll be able to find the Curves Workbench in there and add it. The reason why I'm using the Curves Workbench is that it has a nice utility called the Parametric Solid. That means I can create a solid from this and keep it parametric. We've only got the loft and the surfaces available here. So I'm going to come up to edit. 
and use the box selection and highlight all of that there. You can see everything's been highlighted, everything's turned green. And now I can use this tool here, the parametric solid. We've got a solid now. So what we can do, we can add anything to this. Let's say, turn this into a YouTube button. Let's come over to the sketcher. Look from the top, our apps are down. So let's bring this around this way. Make sure nothing's selected. New sketch, X, Y plane. Okay, that. Do a section view. And we'll use the polyline and create a triangle in here. So I'm connecting that to here, go into here, and we'll just connect up to this point here. I've got the auto constraints on. So if I look here, I've got the auto constraints and that's added those there. Let's escape to cancel the tool. And what I'm going to do is just place this centered in here. So I'm going to use a circle. So I'm going to create a circle in here, come out, and we'll connect up to this point here. Point on object constraint, which is going to connect up to that line. Escape to cancel the tool. So that's connected there. I'm going to take this point and this circle. Put an object constraint and do the same for this one. Put an object and change this one to construction geometry using this one here. Toggle construction geometry. So that won't show up. We'll use the constraint preserving sketch fillet and just fill it off the edges here. So that point will stay connected. And we'll do the same this side and the same this side, like so. Hit escape and we'll select these curves. Make those equal. We can constrain this down if we wanted to, but I'm just going to leave it like this and close that. So at the moment, the sketch is hidden in the surface. I could take the sketch, come up to the part workbench and extrude it. So extrude it through the top, Let's go for 10 mil. That's not far enough. I can see that it is, the sketch is actually sitting here and the extrude is there. So I'm going to move that up. Let's right click and transform and move that so it comes out of the top like so. Okay, that, and we can see that this is an actual solid by clicking on it, one we want to keep, control click the one we want to remove and use a cut. So I've cut that in there. I can alter the depth, come into the cut, bring back the extrude and right click and transform this. Doing this a lot by eyeballing it in, we can be more accurate if we wanted to, put that about there. And OK that. So now I can hide that extrude by clicking on it and pressing the spacebar. So we've got that in there. And we'll add some fillets in here as well. So we'll take this curve here and add the fillet. One thing that we have to remember is not to cross to this curve here that goes around here. So one millimeter might not be enough. Let's OK that, which it is, it's fine. If it was too much, it will go past here and the fillet will fail. So you can see that's in there. If I come up to the view, draw style, and just do shaded, you can see what we've got at the moment. Let's click on the fillet and make that much cleaner with deviation of 0 0.05. So on the view tab, 0 0.05, that's cleaned that up a lot. And you can see we've got the final shape. Now you saw with the other one, it had some color as well. So I can click on the fillet and add some color on the view. Shape color. We'll set it to red. So that's the color of the whole object. Okay, that, got the red there. The white, we're gonna come in and we're gonna color this face here. We can use the color again. Faces, select the face there. 
the moment it's red, click on that and set it to white and OK. So we've got that there. Just OK that. And we've got the finished shape that we want. We could render this or put a quick texture map on it. View texture map in. Set this to environment. This is just a preview. And I'm looking for some random JPEG. So this will just give a bit of a metal look to it. So it's any JPEG. It's just a reflection. So you can see there's a bit of a reflection on there. And you get this. So it's just reflecting the JPEG that I've added. And we get this object here. If you wanted to render this out, then we just go over to something like Blender and render this out. We've got render workbenches in FreeCAD that we can use, but Blender's built for that. And we can get something like this. I hope that's giving you an insight of the Surface Workbench and making that continuity. And I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the new one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.